Hey, Cam. Uh, good to see you again. Um, I'm just wondering if, if you can start by taking us through your emotions of the week, starting with the call from Matt on Tuesday all the way to kind of walking onto the practice field today. Ooh, how much time we got? Yeah, like, honestly, I'm still floating, you know, but I feel like I'm going to say this a lot. It's not about me, you know, and it's about it's about being an addition additional piece to this team and that's why I, I plan on keeping it. Cam, it's good to see you again. Welcome back. Um, what do you have, what in your mind do you have to prove or does the team have to prove and, and I guess basically why did you come back to this squad, this franchise? Because when I, um, you know, when you thought about the question and you asked yourself personally, what are you looking to in a team? Uh, one of them, not in no particular order, is are they a contender? Right. Number two is, you know, what's the chances? You know, are you are you do you have a realistic opportunity to be so late in the season to compete? You know, and. You know, number three, what's the skill set around so you can show your talents as well? And check, check, check. And it was a no-brainer. And obviously there's the added dimension where the familiarity here. But, you know, once again, I get to the point of it's, everybody wants to make it about, you know, Cam's back, this, that, and the third. It's, it's really not – it's really – Look, I, I, you know where I'm here, and this ain't for no ploy. This ain't for no ticket sales. This ain't for no, you know, Cinderella story. It's it's to win football games, and that's pretty much what's on my heart, and that's how I'm going about it. Thanks. Let's go to Jonathan Alexander, followed by Darren Gant. What's up, Cam? Jonathan Alexander, shot observer. Hope you're doing well, man. I'm curious, during the time that you weren't with the Patriots until now, did you pay much attention to um, the Panthers and what was happening? And if so, what was your impression? And if not, I got another question for you. No, I didn't, to be honest with you. I didn't, I didn't pay attention to nobody. I think throughout this, this time, it has been therapeutic to my overall growth as a person. And, you know, just me realizing that you know, I have to start really maximizing each and every opportunity in my life. Not from a financial standpoint, not from a, you know, a concern standpoint of, of things that, you know, any other person may, you may have to worry about. It was more or less about what, what are the real routines that I can start putting myself on because for so long in my life, I was always given an agenda, like, Prime example, you know, we got a team meeting tomorrow, a certain time, we're leaving a certain time, we're doing this a certain time, dinner's a certain time, lunch is a certain time. When you're home, it's no reminder, you know. So for that, I just had to in, insert discipline in my life, no different than any other thing any of you guys, you know, have to do it, deal with too, so. That's pretty much it. As far as me being, a, 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 you know, still connected to the game, outside of working out, that mm -mm, I was a full-time dad and I uh, was looking forward to it. And I was a full-time fitness fiend and I uh, was looking forward to that too, so. Go ahead, Darren. Cam, uh, speaking of being a fitness fiend, how would you describe where you are physically right now? Are you ready to play another seven, eight games this year? And how quickly do you think you can make a contribution here? Um, it's always mental that you think like you can conquer and do anything, but you actually won't know until you actually are in that situation. Um, there's an old saying, stay ready, so you won't have to get ready. And I've been, safe to say, I've been staying pretty ready. Uh, but it's still a process, though. You know, 
being away from the game for as long as I have, realistically, of course, everybody wants to say, oh, man, it's this, it's that, it's this, it's that. I think my biggest impact that I want to kind of drive and I want to be driven home is accountability. You know, I'm holding myself accountable to make sure that I do anything cultural ass of me as well as, you know, uh, Coach Joe and making sure that if they can trust me being a trusted teammate, then I can hold everybody else accountable uh, from PJ to, you know, Matt to, you know, even Sam for that for that particular matter. You know, it's 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 it can easily get confused why and I can see how, but I can promise you that, you know, my mental going into this type of situation is bring, you know, the pride back to Carolina in ways that I know how and others know how too. It's just making sure that we maximize each and every day. All right, let's go to Joe Person next, followed by Nick Carboni. Cam, good to see you. Been a while. Yes, um, sir. I, I know Matt said he called you Tuesday night, I think it was. Was there anything you wanted to hear from him uh, about kind of the way things kind of went down 20 months ago and or kind of the direction and, and his vision for how he wanted to use you moving forward? Nice to hear from you, Mr. Persons. Uh, I think you've heard this answer a lot, but it's irrelevant. <laughs> like when it comes down to why I'm here now, it's already, you know, late in late in the week and I'm already behind. So um we had an unbelievable conversation. He told me what his expectations is. I will not share for obvious reasons. And it's my job to execute what those expectations is. Were there disconnect in the past? It's irrelevant. The fact that we're able to make what may seem a lot of wrongs or some wrongs right, that's the most exciting thing about it. And to hell with feelings, it would be the biggest right and wrong by just winning football games. And that's what it pretty much comes down to. Amy, you talked about getting here late in the week. How similar or different is this offense to ones you've run in the past? And, and kind of what was today about spending a lot of time with your position coach, Sean Ryan? Yeah, it was getting into the groove of things. You know, this is a whole different system, you know, from the practice style to I just winning football games. everything that comes with, you know, the game of football. So doesn't matter how many years you've been playing in the NFL, differences are what differences are. And, um, you know, from going over simplistic things as formations, going over simplistic things of what's the next period, going over simplistic things as, you know, who's that person, you know, in the huddle next to you. So it's a lot of things that I got to get fast-tracked on, and I'm looking forward to the process. Let's go to Sheena Quick, followed by David Newton. Hi, Cam. Sheena Quick here. Um, a lot of the questions I had have already been asked, but part of what was such a huge part of who you were in Charlotte is your community work. A lot of the fans, I know it's only been a day, things are still marinating, but can they expect Santa Cam and the Thanksgiving work that, that they've become so familiar with during your time here in Charlotte? Man, I see that you trying to – you jumping out just like your last name. Quick, huh? So, uh, my, my, my cup is runneth over right now, Miss Quick. Trust and believe that, you know, all my energy and everything that I'm focused on right now is making sure that the reason why I'm here in the Carolina is the number one to perform, and then philanthropy will follow. I can promise you that. Hey, Cam, David Newton here. Just welcome back to uh, Charlotte. Good to see you. Looking good, by the way. Appreciate um, it. I, I'm curious, how has been, being, being with another organization the past couple of years changed you as a player and a person? And I've got to follow up with that. I mean, I could, 
words can't even explain. I, let's 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 state the obvious. I'd be a fool not to have taken the things that I've learned at other organizations and and apply it to what needs to be done here. And also learning a whole nother situ, uh, situation. You know, Coach uh, Coach Rue talked about you know what the brand is, and I'm I, I have to buy in. I want to buy in. I'm going to buy in and get others to buy in. And that's pretty much what it comes down to. And I also want to ask you, a lot of, I guess, things going on since you're returning. Have you seen one or what's the one thing you've seen from fans or whatever that's let you know um, they're happy to see you back? My head has been so far into a playbook that, I mean, I know the buzz is going on. And if you follow me, you know that I'm off of social media so it's not like I'm, I can follow it. And I think that's a good thing for me now because it would be distracting. And I just want everybody to know, you know, who's a part of, you know, the Panther Nation and, and I receive it. But, like, I'm, this ain't no parade. Like, let's get to work, you know what I mean? And I'm wasting too much time talking to the, to the Newton, David Newtons of the world. Scott Fowler's of the world, the Joe Persons of the world, my favorites, and you know it's 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 really an opportunity for me for me to get better. Like I say, so I mean I'm excited to be back. I wanted to be back, and for me to be in a position like this that has so many obviouses, it makes sense. Appreciate it. All right, let's go to Ellis Williams, followed by Chris Jenkins. Hey, Cam. Ellis William, Charlotte Observer. Nice to virtually meet you. Uh, I'm wondering just your overall thoughts on this roster. When you, when you look at it, you know, things have, have changed uh, since you left, of course. So what made you think this is a winning situation? What convinced you? Well, it really comes down to everybody living up to, you know, the best version of themselves. And a lot of that comes with leadership. A lot of that comes with accountability. A lot of that comes with just want to. So... A little bit of both, a little bit of all three, a little bit of just one. That's what, that's what it comes down to. I mean, they started on fire for a reason, and it wasn't just by one person. You know, they started on fire because it was a collective group of great football being played. How we got to four and five, it's irrelevant. But here moving forward, you know, it's just all about accountability and performing. So uh, the roster speaks for itself. We know what we have, and it's not about, you know, trying to prove more than, than, than saying to yourself, like, man, I'm not going to let you down, I'm not going to let you down, and you can trust me and, and, and hold me accountable. And one more thing real quick. DJ mentioned working out with you in Atlanta. Uh, how have you seen him grow and improve uh, since 2019 when you were working with him at first? Yeah, well, I've, I've been following now. Yeah. You know, I left him. He was, he was uh, Simba. You know, and I wouldn't even say he was he he moved faster now, cause that still belonged to me. But uh, that was a joke, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when I left DJ, man, he was a he was he he was a young pup, man, and I just feel like for him, it's 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 great that he's playing with that confidence that he's he's feeling himself in in a good way, and I want him to feel himself even more, cause once he get it. Once Robbie gets it, once once I mean we already know about C Mac, but once those guys that you know the reason why they're here or the reason or their worth to this offense, they start getting it, you know, we'll be fine. All right, man, appreciate it. Hey Cam, Chris Jenkins. I'm a little disappointed I didn't make your list, but uh, good to see you back, nevertheless. You a good guy, Chris. You a good guy. <laughs> I'm just playing. Look, all, the other guys just be on the fence. You know how they have a way with words. You know, we know, we know that. So hey, I, Cam, I, if you could. I got to get them some vegetables or something, man, to get them back in good graces. So hopefully, they don't have a way with words with this one. Okay. Hey Cam, if you could, in your your Funky Fridays kind of way, walk me through that call that you got earlier this week with Matt Rule, um, what your emotions were like during that call. And I know you can't share everything, but any highlights 
that you can share in terms of things that you should, that those conversations to get you back here with the Carolina Panthers? Then I have a follow up for you. You know, sometimes when you look at the call ID growing up, because then you know the kids don't necessarily have call ID now, but now they got call ID on the cell phone. I see Matthew Rule. Miss Call. I said, what in the world? It's God. Hey, it's me. Are you playing? So you missed the first call? Yeah. I, but I was, you know, I'm a dad, man, you know, tapping in, doing the re responsibilities, holding myself accountable. And then also in November, man, I've been fasting too. So, you know, making sure that detoxifying myself from, from my cellular device can be a distraction. So a little bit of all those things. And once I seen it, it was like, hold up, somebody playing with me? And uh, you know when we when we talked, it was it was very exhilarating to to just you know hear his voice and you know I'm in a position now, man, that it could easily just be you know about Cam like da 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 da. I don't this not this not that type of vibe, man. You know I'm happy to be here. I want everybody to know that I'm happy, but <laughs> bruh, it's time to win. We got a big game coming up, um, and. You know, as far as that goes, it's a must win. So that's that's where all energy is. I mean, I know you guys got a job to do. It's Friday. I'm not pretty sure how many people read the paper on Saturdays. But. <laughs> right, well, then my, my follow up, Cam, is that uh, in New England, when you uh, left there, weren't going to get the starting job. It was maybe a sense that you would have too much of a personality to be uh, Second, now we have a pending Sam Darnold coming back. How would things be different here in Carolina and you not have to deal with that same situation? All my energy is focused on trying to make this team better. We four and five right now, got an opportunity on Sunday to become one and oh, as so many signs around here says and states. And that's pretty much what it's all about. Speaking on the past, it's irrelevant. Speaking on the future, it's irrelevant. And I'm just focusing on the present right now and trying to maximize that. Thank you. All right, let's go to Steve Reed and then Brett Jensen. Hey Cam, I had a different question, but just to follow up on Chris. So what were you doing when, when you saw that phone call? Were you playing ball with the kids or uh, cooking dinner? What were you doing exactly? It was Taco Tuesday. <laughs> you were making tacos or ordering tacos? Not ordered tacos. Okay. Yeah, it was Taco Tuesday, you know, and uh, I've been real heavy on them tacos. Not heavy, but like not heavy as in eating a lot, but heavy and like really looking forward to it. You feel me? Yep. So. You had to put those on hold, huh? Uh, fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I was going to ask you, this is, a, this is kind of a new scenario for you. I mean, you, you've always been with the team to start the year and have had time to prepare. I mean, you got new appreciation for these for quarterbacks that come in in the middle of the season and, and how much uh, how much work it takes to kind of cram and, and to catch up like you're having to do right now? You just got to be a pro and you got to be realistic with expectations. And that's why this is this conversation is so important for people to understand, you know, when that time does come, um, you know, people must realize, I must first realize, like, man, you got to be realistic. Like, you haven't pushed your body to really take on the girth of what's going to be asked of you. Mentally, you're going to be like, man, I'm me. But physically, it's like, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully, you know, I've been, you know, doing the right things or the situation is what it is. But... You know, I'll be ready. I pride myself on being ready and being realistic with what the expectation is and performing when that when that when that opportunity presents itself. So. Cam, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, this year, there's been at least seven teams that lost their starting quarterback for many games. Um, maybe a team or two reached out to you, but were you surprised that you were still an, a free agent uh, up until? couple days ago and I got to follow up after that thanks 
No. It, it, it's a lot of those questions. I know you guys have questions and concerns, but where I'm at right now, mentally, physically, spiritually, you know, no energy in those on the, on, on that on that specific question. It's just more or less trying to be the best version of myself for the Carolina Panthers during this season. And I, my follow up to that related is: Do you felt like? Do you feel like you had to get vaccinated in order to be signed by a team? Do you think that was like a mandatory thing? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that, um, but everybody's opinion is what everybody's opinion is, and I just hope that everybody respects everyone's opinion. I can, it can become, you know, somewhat judgmental, and if anybody knows me, no, I don't judge, you know. There's been situations where people who have gotten it, they're fine. And there's been people who have gotten it, hasn't been fine. There's been situations where people who didn't get it are fine. And people who didn't get it are not fine. So either way, you know, it's risk and reward and however you want to look at it. All right, guys, we're a little tight on time, so we'll get three more in. So we'll go to Colin Cole. Three. by Steve in Toronto and finish with Joe Person. Thank you. Cam, what's up, man? This is Colin Cole, man. I don't know if you remember me, but I played with you back man, in the day. Man, you cut your hair, man. No, 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 no. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still back there. Oh, still back there. oh, I see. I see. I'm still back there. I'm still back there. But hey, man. Hey, so what's going on? I appreciate Hey, I'm good, man. I hope you're doing well. And uh, Impeccable. I appreciate the opportunity. And so, hey. I'm talking to you from a different point of view. Back when I met you back in 2013, I was coming off of a similar situation, having not played for a bit of time. And so my question to you is, coming off, coming into that same type of situation, how do you approach this? Like, is this a situation where you feel like this is kind of make or break for you the rest of your career? Or how do you feel about this situation for you moving forward? Man, I'm gonna tell you this, it's so much gratitude not to say I ain't had gratitude before, but this time it hit different, you know. Um, yeah, so, bruh, I, I want to be present. I said that talking to so many different people. I want to be so present that I even even had opportunities to look at my phone. I don't want to look at my phone. That's kind of what I've been on here lately. Uh, but I just, I just want to be there. I'm so excited to be back in Carolina and to be playing meaningful games, not just no one day contract, put your, you know, you know how that go. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, man, God has granted me an opportunity that a lot of people don't even, don't even get. So I got to do right by it. So that means I have to prepare the right way. I can't assume, I can't just guesstimate because every opponent Almost has the same energy. It's irrelevant, bro. We don't. We know who you are. We may fool with you. We may not. It's still about winning football games. And when you have an opportunity to win football games and it count, it's 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 something special. So, yeah, this second go around, man, it's so much to be grateful for. But I think the preparation is going to be extremely key. Being that I'm so far behind, and I don't want to take nothing for granted. Absolutely, man. Speaking from my own experience, man, it's definitely a grateful opportunity. Yeah. Considering all things considered, and you are in a prime position to take full advantage of that, man. Yes, I sir. definitely see you around the hallways, brother, and good luck to you. Appreciate you, man. Bro. Hope the family yeah. and kids are good, bro. Same to you, brother. Absolutely. Yes, Damn, it's damn good to see you again. Uh, so the names and faces in the locker room from the time you were last year, they've really changed. And I know, I know that some guys are still there, like, you know, DJ, uh, Shaq, uh, JC Carter, and all those guys. Uh, have you gotten, as you've gotten to know some of the new guys in the locker room yet, uh, how have the nicknames been developing, or have you worked on them yet? Oh, where are they coming? They brewing. I got one, I got one just off of, well, really two. Got Bruno Mars. Yeah, my guy. Put your hands up. And then, and then, hmm, what y'all gonna do? He just dropped an album, by the way. Can't wait to listen. Um, and then we got uh, C-Mac Jr. And for people who don't know, 
it's just like, man, bro, that's lame. I'm like, you think it's lame until they catch, and when they catch, it's gonna catch like, like something. <laughs> so for what's worth, I think they're cool as hell. Yeah, I mean, it's it's dope. It's this this team unity, and you know, it's funny that you know when I see Ian. Ian was like, bro, like, you didn't call me Chief Keep. I'm excited. I'm like, yeah, see, you, you know, you bought in. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's so good to be back here, man. It's so good to have an opportunity again. And, you know, once this is over, conversation that is, it's, it's back to work. Let's go to Joe for the final question. Hey, Cam, I'd be interested to hear more about the fasting and, um, how are you just in terms of are you at your playing weight at this point? Oh, yeah. Uh, fasting kind of stemmed from a, um, a church service that I attended uh, at my home church in Atlanta by way of Holy Zion Center of Deliverance that my father is a preacher over of. And in the month of October, and still speaking on the talking points of transition, and how God can transition your life into your new beginning. So, which is crazy, talking to Colin, you know, it's, it's a lot of gratitude here. He came from the book of Exodus. And if people know the Bible, they know Exodus is about Moses. And, you know, one thing that God was, you know, kind of trying to teach Moses through this transition was just have faith. Trust me. Trust in me. Everything that your heart's desire, everything that you need, I will give it to you. So I felt like in a lot of ways, you know, while I had this off time, I felt like Moses. You know, when I when you go to the desert, when you go in that place of isolation, you know, you gotta, it's just you and God. It's just you and your circumstance. And it's not for you to question. It's not for you to be angry. It's not for you to just it's just for you to just trust, and that's what I did. And I hope, you know, that this situation doesn't change me because I, I mean, I'm in a, I'm in a good place, man. And not only a good place before this, I'm even in a better place now. You feel me? So, man, boy, if I was any better, boy, I'd be a twin. Like, I really feel that way because. Man, I, I feel like I'm home. I know I'm home, but, you know, I, a person said to me yesterday, it was like, you know, happy to see you, Cam. Glad that you came back to us. And I'm like, man, I'm glad y'all came after me. You feel me? And I, I just want people to know, man, it's such, like, a lot of times your message can get kind of misconstrued with certain situations and stipulations. And I say, I speak on this once and the fact that this is the last question I can, and it's no follow-up questions. Was I in a, was I in a, 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 a predicament where I was human? Yeah. Did I feel a certain type of way? Absolutely. But I'm just happy that those decisions didn't go into this decision. Right. And some of them did. And when you have these conversations with important powers that be, you know, this could be, this could be something special. But it's always going back to winning. That's what it's all about. That's why I'm here. It's not about, you know, this wasn't no apology. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, we did you wrong. Let's bring you back. And like, no, nah, uh-uh. Because to be honest with you, it's like there was a version of myself and even going, even speaking on, um, you know, fasting, a lot of people look for the new year to be, you know, new year, new me, you know, uh, New Year's resolutions or things like that. But for me, I, w I had an epiphany, had a thought in my mind to say, I want to become the best version of myself going into this new year without even this opportunity. I felt like I was cheating myself, I was cheating my children, I was cheating my brothers, I was cheating my businesses, I was cheating my people who know me, my friends, I was cheating my business associates. And it wasn't that I was a bad person, it was just like I, I needed to implement structure constantly every single day and purge myself from anything that's keeping me from that. And that's all it was. So without further ado, I will say something that I've been wanting to say for a long time, keep pounding. Thank <laughs> you.